Hi, my name is Clark Russell, and uh, we're happy to be able to, uh, to say some words today. Um, I represent uh, CIMIA. I'm the chairman of CIMIA. CIMIA is the Curiosity Tech Export Association, and we're also happy to be able to, uh, to sponsor this event. Uh, and I think it's a very um, interesting or important event to continue to, uh, uh, to sponsor. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about CIMIA, um, give you some background on where, what we are, what we do. Uh, and it's about, actually today, about member stories. CIMIA is the Curiosity Tech Export Association. It's an association that we started um, two years or three years ago uh, in the heart of uh, uh, COVID, uh, where uh, everything was, uh, was uh, shut down. And also at the midst of uh, economic despair, actually, on the island, we as uh, uh, software developing companies came together, uh, actually, long before that, and spoke about, OK, what do we need to do to turn actually our economy around. And one of the main things that came, of, came forth was that we need to be able to create awareness on how important um, uh, the, 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 the tech sector is, but, uh, but most importantly, what the potential is economically for the island. So CIMIA was formed. It was formed back in 2020. Um, and we represent actually a group of software developing companies met with uh, the aim or with the focus of uh, uh, exporting the goods that we have, right? The software that we built. And um, from the get-go, I think all of our members, when, when we uh, got, got together and explained the vision and the purpose that we have, we said, you know, um, would you like to become a founding member? And ex ex exactly all, I think all members that we approached or all companies that we approached said, you know what, yes, I want to become a founding member. So we started off with, um, I think, 14 or f uh, 13 or 14 members. Most of these names you, uh, you will know. Um, and the main objective of CIMIA is, of course, to, to create uh, um, uh, and collaborate uh, camaraderie within the sector, but make sure that we increase the, um, the software export, but also create awareness at our policymakers uh, and uh, help other companies as members to, uh, to export more. Today, after a brief introduction about, uh, about CIMIA, we'll talk about two members, uh, two, mem two me member story, and these, I think, are inspirational stories that we uh, talk about. One of is uh, HQ Corrental, and Reese will take over um, after my uh, part. Well, I will do a bit of... Uh, uh, the history of IBIS management, and uh, we will talk a bit about what we did to make uh, not only the company, uh, to establish the company and make it grow, but especially what are we doing or what did we do to make it grow internationally, okay? As, a, uh, as an association, uh, we have identified eight areas that are important for our sector to grow. I'm not going to all these, uh, these items, but just to, have an, but to give an idea that we have done our homework and we know what's required uh, for the sector to, uh, to grow. And, uh, and uh, we, have, we, we are talking to a lot of uh, stakeholders to make these, uh, these changes or, or, or have these items or bring these items under attention to our policymakers. So what have we done so far as CIMIA? One of the first things that we did as an, as an association is size the, size the, uh, the, the sector. So, uh, and we have, done, uh, we have um, uh, commissioned a, a baseline study to be done, and I'll cover a couple of pages of that, uh, of, of that uh, study in a moment. Um, we of course, create awareness um, uh, uh, based on the numbers of this story at our policymakers, because these are numbers that are very important for our policymakers to know also to give the sector attention, identify areas where export uh, improvement can be, uh, can be reached. Uh, we also work with our members uh, to improve the tech export branding uh, that, we, uh, uh, that we encourage. Uh, we, net we do networking and export, uh, uh, export knowledge sharing mixers, what we call Soapbox, uh, soapbox initiatives or so Soapbox talks, where we have our members share their experiences with what they do and how they actually reach um, uh, the, the international markets, and typically these are lessons learned throughout the process. And you will hear a couple of those uh, later on today. Um, we share, of course, trade mission information 
as well as event and, uh, uh, and project tender uh, info to our members for them to be able to, uh, to export their services. And one of the main things, of course, is to create a common vision um, for Curacao to become a, what we call a tech innovation supercluster. So just to briefly talk about our, our baseline study that we did uh, two years ago already. Uh, and this baseline study actually shows that we as Curacao and the members that we, uh, 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 from the association as well as non-members, that we already are exporting to over 60 countries within, uh, 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 in the world, which is quite impressive for a small country like, uh, like, Ibis Ma uh, like, uh, like Curacao, as well as uh, uh, the members that we, uh, uh, that we have. So let's, let's look a bit at the numbers. I'm speeding up because I've been requested to, uh, to do it fast because we are running uh, behind in time. Um, the sizing document or this baseline study show that we are actually a very small sector, right? We have 345 direct jobs within the sector. However, these jobs generate over 40, 48 million US dollars a year in revenue. And more than half of that, being 26 million, are international sales. So each year, the Easter, these 345 people generate 26 million in foreign exchange for the country. So it's really a no-brainer if you look at what each and every person in this, in this sector generates um, solely. Yeah? If, if you say, okay, we, we, uh, each person generates 139,000 US dollars. And that's more than double than um, the revenue that, on average, um, the workers in, uh, uh, on our island are, are making. So it's actually a no-brainer for, our, policy, for our, po our policymakers to look at, okay, what do we need to do to increase these numbers? What are, uh, uh, why should we increase these numbers? Because in, effectively, economically, we will, we will generate much more if we increase those, uh, those workers, right, for local companies. So this is a bit to give you an idea on as, um, as uh, the, the, the software industry um, where, where we stand. And of course, these numbers are the, are the, the, the start. And we as CIMIA, uh, would like to, of course, work with our, with our members as well as policymakers to increase those, those numbers and eventually become what we call the first or we, we, we view as the, the fourth economic pillar of the island, right? So that's, that's one of our, our, our main objectives, and everything that has to do with digitization, it has to do with, with um, uh, uh, software development, or that can create a better, uh, a better environment for our companies to do business internationally, specifically software development companies, uh, we, we, we encourage. So these events are also for us important to, uh, to support. So today is about stories and inspiring stories. And the first story I'm gonna tell you is about my company, Ibis Management. Um, that I founded over um, 23 years ago already. So looking at uh, or, or li listening to Mr. Yu today is a uh, is very a, an interesting, an interesting uh, way of uh, 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 promoting and pushing your, your services and product. But this is, if you talk about 23 years ago, I feel like old school, right? I mean, this is, this is definitely a different approach. But we're still here and we're doing, we're doing great as a company. So the story starts like this. Let's do a flashback. In 2000, um, let's go back in 2000 and um, I'm running towards my, uh, my business partner telling him that we just landed our first project. Our first project that um, uh, our first client signed so that it's time now for us to quit our jobs and to really start with the company because um, now it's, uh, it's for real. Uh, this first project meant for us that we needed to um, not only uh, quit our jobs, but also it meant that we, that, that we had enough money for three months, for the first three months, to survive. Um, survive, why? Because we, all, we both had, uh, had, had mortgages, families to feed, etc. So we were, um, uh, it, it was a big step that we took, but we believed in ourselves. Um, and this means, I mean, it was a scary period, but we said, let's, let's just do it. Let me just take a look here. So we were officially entrepreneurs. Uh, 
So after 20 years, um, we are now a, uh, a recognized financial um, software developer or, or solution provider within the region, um, renowned, uh, with an established name in banking and payments, uh, and across the region uh, for our products and services. This is the dream of many entrepreneurs, right? Just to be there and be at that level. However, our story um, could and would have been very different if, not, if we didn't, from the start, focus on the international market. So from the start, when we, when, when we started the company, we said no, within a couple of years, we would need to have a footprint of clients internationally. But you can imagine, if we, didn't, if we didn't choose that from the start or manage that mindset from the start, we would still become, be a local company focusing on the local market, right? So we would have been just another software company being um, yeah, busy catering to the local market. So that dream and vision or purpose was something that we, uh, that we embraced and uh, we wanted to, yeah, but I, I think break free from the herd and uh, wanted to break, break away from the island. Uh, that's how it actually started, a clear vision. And then it took us 20 years to get there, right? Um, but I really do believe that it starts right there. It really starts with that dream or that clear picture or where you want to be or when to, wh where you want to become in the future. And once you have that clear, there is nothing that will stop you. And there is a lot of twists and turns along the way, but in the end, if that is what you have in front of you, that is what will happen. Uh, so, one of the main things also is that you have to just go for it. Um, and don't get distracted. I think one of the things that, that you typically get when you start a business, you have a lot of skepticism. People tell you, you know, you're crazy, it will not work. When we started IBIS Management, they told us, no oh, man, there are only six banks on the island. Who are you going to cater? What are you going to do? And if I would have listened to, ev to all these people, I would, we, we would not have been IBIS Management or we would have not been where we are today, right? Uh, so they called me crazy, yes. Failure is, is, uh, failure is sexy. That's something I heard just now from, uh, from one of the, 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 the speakers. Uh, don't be afraid to fail. Be in constant learning mode. Continuously ask yourself how you can make things better, even though it's working fine. Um, if it's working fine, rethink and re-engineer your, your approach and try it again. One of the stories that I like to share always is um, when, you're learning, when you're in learning mode, um, the, the, the best time you learn is when you fail hard. And I'm going to share one story with you. In 2005, we, um, uh, we as a company, we were, we were existing five years. We had a couple of clients. So we said, you know what, let's start doing um, seminars like these or conferences like these, specifically uh, in the markets that we, uh, that we operate in and try to convince our, uh, our clients, which are banks, our, 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 sorry, our prospect market, which are banks, to, um, to uh, yeah, choose for our products or um, uh, convince them that we are experts in that area. So one of the, one of the seminars that we, that we organized uh, was in the Bahamas. And I think it's one of the, the, the first big international or foreign uh, 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 conferences that we did. Um, and it was in a nicely, uh, 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 one of the nice hotels in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, we prepared ourselves extremely well. We did, of course, marketing campaigns. We did email rounds. We did calls. We did follow-up calls. Uh, we even flew in uh, two of our clients or three of our clients, CEOs of banks that were, our, that, 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 have, that were already using our products just for them to be talking about the testimonials and telling about how good we are. And it all seemed perfectly organized. But in the end, only one person showed up. Only one person showed up to a, uh, an event that we organized. And um, of course, we were devastated. Uh, we were, yeah, I think, mentally 
uh, broken and we went back with a tail between our legs and we said, never again, this will never happen again. And, um, but one of the important lessons we learned from this event was how important it is to have local partners that can help you bring the audience to the events that you want to, uh, that you want to uh, organize. Because of course you can, invent, uh, you can um, invest a lot in, uh, in events, but uh, you need to have the audience. Like I'm happy now to see a lot, a, lot, a lot of people walking in, so that's good. <laughs> so that's an important step. So if you w w one of the things that, that, that we always need to do is make sure that you have local partner and local knowledge uh, in that area. But don't be afraid to fail. And fail fast, stand up, clean up yourself, and move on and learn from it. Today, uh, our hybrid seminars are well attended by clients all over the world, and the Bahamas has become one of our um, solid markets, um, and this is just to, to illustrate the, um, the importance of learning from your mistakes. Beyond that, it's, for, it's also important to be aware on how you're being perceived. From early on, uh, we defined IBIS Management as an international company that happened to be located in the, on the beautiful island of Curaçao, rather than a Curaçao-based company doing business internationally. The difference is actually very important. If you want to be perceived as a solid international company, you have to talk about your company as being the solid international company. So again, so we started um, and convinced ourselves that we are in an international company doing business from the, the beautiful island of Curaçao instead of a Curaçao-based company. This was communicated and internalized um, in our entire organization. This, all, this uh, contributed specifically to how we wanted to be perceived um, uh, to the outside world, of course. We also instated, and back then, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking 15 years ago, right? So we also instated um, English as our official corporate language, which actually is something that, once you think about it, it may be a small change. But once you start your meetings in English, everybody starts thinking, why are we talking English? No, we are an international company, so we need to be able to communicate well in English. Um, we developed English phone answering script for everyone, and we also um, organized uh, internal conversation courses. Uh, so these are things that are small, but very important to, uh, uh, to instate. Let me see here, just flying through it. always there to be different. Make it a point uh, to be and do everything differently from the herd. Um, all the time, in everything you do. So when attending and sponsoring conferences, we, all, we, we always made sure that we stand out or do, uh, do things that the other ones are not doing. If normally people were putting business cards in a bowl, no, we'd make a game, we make sure to interact with the people to give for, for us to get our card and for them to get the information we have to share with them. Uh, if you really need to copy a business or do something similar to, to, to the competition, copy it well. So going outside our borders is, uh, requires significant investment, not only in money, but also in time. So it all starts with, um, it all starts with um, identifying the new market, m making sure that this is the market I'm going to, uh, to focus on, um, and plan a step-by-step uh, interaction with the market that you are uh, planning to attack. Don't make it too big, uh, sorry, too big. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now I got your attention, right? Now I got your attention, so. <laughs> Feeling is sexy. Feeling is sexy. Everybody's answering now. <laughs> no, don't, don't make it too big or else you'll spread yourself uh, too thin. Identify um, your, and, quantify, uh, and qualify your prospects before you go. Use the internet to make sure the person you're going to meet with has uh, the ability to, uh, of course, um, uh, the power to, uh, to, 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 to make decisions or that you are at the, at the level that you want to talk to. Define a specific time uh, that you will be in, the, in town there and tell them that this is uh, when you can meet. And... In our case, we only talk to C-level executives when we uh, promote our, pr our products. We don't talk with, with IT managers, we don't talk with operations, we just talk with C-level executives. 
um, and to make the, the trip worthwhile because it, it costs a lot of money to be there and to, we make sure that we, that we fill our days. We fill our days with three to four meetings every day um, and uh, in order for you to be successful, you will have to uh, make sure that you know so much, so much details of the prospect you are uh, meeting with uh, before the meeting, of course. Don't let them explain to you. No, you tell them who they are and what, what they need from you. Pay attention to uh, the local business and the local business etiquette. Very important. Someone likes to wine and dine. Some, likes to go, some like to go for drinks. Um, the objective of your of the, um, of the meeting and 20, the 20-minute 20 meetings that you uh, want to do is just to explain uh, or to get their interest in your product. That's all. So focus, no matter what. And I always say, think how they think. Huh? Meaning, use the island mindset. And I say, island thinking is something that we all have. We are island-conditioned persons, people. We have the same way of thinking as our neighboring islands. Island mentality, we all have it. So use it to your benefit. The fact is that we know that one of the major things that we all have is that imported products are or we believe that imported products are the only ones that are, that, that are the only products that are good or have the quality. Um, but use that to your, to, to your benefit because when you're exporting to other nations in the region, your product is also an imported product. So don't be shy, don't think that you, just use that to your benefit. As islanders or as an island uh, developed product, or, uh, uh, you, are always, you always need to work twice as hard or even more than that to reach the same quality level of international standards. And it has to do with the fact that we have to do a lot of stuff our own. Yeah? We, you, we don't have access to a lot of resources, but you have to really work hard to reach a certain level of, uh, of, uh, of quality. So that's something that typically gives you better, a better... Um, Access or a better, how do you say that, a quality level. All right, let's move on. So, if there's one thing you um, remember from my speech today, you don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. All right, I'm going to give my, the word to Reese. No, no, there's no more time anymore? Oh, wow, okay. All right, then uh, the story of HQ rental software is not. Uh, <laughs> It's not going to be said today. Elevator pitch. Elevator pitch. Elevator pitch. You want to say something, uh, Riz? You, you want to say something about H? All right. Then I want to leave. Uh, I will leave it till here. <laughs> thank you for your attention. Uh, and um, no, thank you. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, Clark. Thank you so much for your time. Is there any questions for Clark? <laughs> Unfortunately, time is not in our benefits today. Um, but what is the short pitch? What is the elevator pitch for HQ Rental? H HQ Rental software. HQ Rental is one of our... our, our um, I want to say also dual members uh, who have developed a, uh, a, um, H or, or a rental software, a car, car rental software that's being used in over how many? Uh, come on, Reese. <laughs> you can have over 600 countries. <laughs> no, sorry, 600 clients around the world. Let's give, let's give him the mic. Let's give him the mic. <laughs> Yeah, so I started HQ about seven years ago, and um, it, was, it started because we had a, a local customer that wanted us to build a car rental software, and while we were building that, we thought, okay, there's actually an opportunity here, because we recognized that there weren't that many competitors in that space. It was a lot of companies that had very old-school software, and so we um, started basically what, what the previous speaker was was explaining about how to sort of build your online presence, Dennis, I mean. That's, that's kind of the journey that we went through, and so we were able at, at some point to, to come on, to, to rank very high on Google and to rank very high on Captera, which is um, 
a comparison platform for software. So actually, nowadays we're ranked the as, yeah, we're ranked as the best rated car rental software worldwide. Um, and so yeah, as Clark was saying, we have just over 900 car rental companies that are working with our software. On a monthly basis, we're onboarding about 50 new customers. And it's, yeah, it's a very international business. So yeah, we're present in over 65 countries, I believe. Um, about 75% of our business is focused on the US. And yeah, so that's just the, uh, the short elevator pitch. And uh, awesome. maybe one other, at another uh, day, we'll, we'll do a deep dive.